Good morning. Right, we're out in the garage. We're talking about the Daytona, Dirtona, sorry, which is the new name for it. Um, things aren't going quite to plan. Let's take a look. Right, so on a recent video, I showed you the Daytona, started first click of the button and all things were good. So I decided to get a number plate fitted, which is legal in all countries except Great Britain. Um, I fitted some mirrors to it, we're getting somewhere. I gave it a really good wash, obviously you'll, the tank's over there, but you'll find out why in a moment. Gave it a really good wash, got it cleaned up, got it all sorted and thought, right, we're aiming towards the MOT fairly soon. Obviously, things don't always go to plan. So I went to start it the other day and I have no start. I thought, OK, it's been left a few days. We'll get the battery on charge, charge the battery up. Doesn't matter how much I've got the battery powered up, it won't charge. So we thought, OK, we'll start from basics. So what I did was disconnected the fuel line from the bottom of the tank, which is over there and goes there. Um, cycle the ignition. Nothing happens. So I thought, okay, I'll pull the clutch in and turn it over. Maybe just it's already primed and, and it just needs uh, to be turned over. On cranking, still nothing happening. So we have to go into a bit of diagnostics now. So we are where we are now. I've taken the tank off, which is right there. Um, and we're checking the wiring. I've already checked this, but I'm going to go through it with you just so you know I'm not a complete idiot and I'm just a halfwit. Uh, so bear with me, let me set the camera up somewhere sensible and then we'll go through that testing. Okay, so first things first, whenever you're dealing with anything that involves petrol or any fuel or any flammable substance, obviously take precautions. So make sure you're wearing gloves to protect your skin, goggles to protect your eyes and make sure there's no risk of any flame or heat source that could ignite the fuel and cause you more problems than just a poorly starting 15 year old triumph. All right, so. This is the main power um, for the fuel pump in the tank. Now, I've already done this, but I'll go through it with you anyway. So we'll turn our cheap little multimeter on. Doesn't matter how cheap they are, because they all give fairly good readings, unless you're sort of checking something that's quite precise. We'll pop our connections in there. Now, obviously, ignition's off, and we've got zero value. If I turn the ignition on, what this is going to do is try and prime the tank. Put that a bit closer so you can see it. Bear with caller. Okay, so hopefully you can see that there. Zero volts now with everything turned off. We'll cycle the ignition and it's going to 12 volts. So it is doing that initial prime. After a few seconds, it cuts off. That just primes the fuel rail um, for the injection system. But now what will happen is when I crank the engine, that should go to 12 volts again. I've already strapped close the clutch because I haven't got three hands unfortunately. Uh, so I've strapped that close so this should turn over now by clicking the button. And as you can see the voltage goes up. Now I know the voltage is a bit low there, it's only shown nine volts, that's because um, I haven't had the battery on charge overnight so that's purely because of that and I was trying to start it a lot yesterday which uh, knocked the battery a bit. But what you can see is when we're cycling the ignition and when we are Cranking it over, we're getting the correct voltage from the wiring, which should go into the tank. All right, so that's one thing done. So one thing I did think about um, after washing the bike is maybe the tank cap itself hadn't sealed properly and when wash, washing the bike causes water to go into the fuel. So I drained the fuel off to check it. It was old anyway, so I had to change it, um, but I've got no separation. So there's no water getting in there, which is one thing that's good because that's one thing I don't have to worry about and it's tested okay. So the next thing we have to do is take a look at the fuel pump in the tank. Because it looks like either it's blocked or it's just not working anymore, which is something we have to work on. So what we have to do now is siphon out all the fuel that I put in there yesterday. Okay, so what I did was bought one of these contraptions, which apparently is an automatic siphoning system, um, which you kind of put into the fuel can at the bottom or whatever you're going to use, you pop that into the tank to the bottom and then you kind of just work it. Uh, 
and then eventually it just self siphons siphons down into the container which is great because it tastes a lot better doing it this way okay so we got a bit more out than i was expecting so in actual fact i probably didn't drain it out completely yesterday but i know that's not the issue i've got some petrol over my trousers as well which is not going to go down too well with the washing machine anyway right we've got most of the fuel out more than enough to take out than i need to take the pump out let's go on to the next stage okay so the tank's drained uh, one thing i did forget to mention is when you are working on any fuel system make sure you're in a well ventilated area because that is vitally important So what I'm hoping really is I'm going to take this pump out and the filter is going to be blocked. That would be a nice easy fix. I can then test it before putting it back on the bike and everyone's happy. Okay, so the pump's loose. I'm just going to make sure that I put it back in the correct place by making a little mark there and there and then if we lift the lock ring out and then hopefully the tank will come out or the pump will come out sorry without too much grief okay there's a little clip there which is making it difficult I'm not sure if that has to come off separately I don't want to break anything, so there's no cutout. Right, I'm just going to have a little check of the manual, and I'll come back to you. Okay, so the tank's ready to come out. It was just that little piece there that was causing a bit of a problem. So I say tank every time, the pump's ready to come out. That little piece there was causing a problem, and after reading through the forums and watching a couple of videos, it's purely a case of giving it a bit of a lever with some pliers to get it past the lip. But that's all good. Right, so that is, and I'm gonna put another towel up here, just there. That is the fuel pump that sits in the tank. So, there's still some fuel in there, so I do need to be a bit sensible. See, my suspicion is it's just blocked. Uh, anyway, right, we're going to have a little strip down, and then depending on what I find, see it's coming out now, which makes me think it might be just a blocked filter and I've disturbed it, which would be nice. Right, so yeah, I'm going to have a little play, see what I find, and then I'll come back in a sec. Okay, so what we have found is that gauze filter which is inside the tank and on the bottom of the pump and just stops all the real bad grime getting up into it is in quite bad condition. It's actually split, it's got loads of problems on it and I think, looking at the state of it, it's quite badly blocked. Now that could have caused the pump to, to run dry and do all sorts of problems. So what I'm going to do is put the pump back together, attach it to the wiring and just see if I can get the pump to motor because you should be able to feel um, a little bit of pressure coming out there even if it's just air and that'll give me an idea that it's actually okay apart from that filter which hopefully is available separate. Okay so I've connected the plug back up um, in theory now if I turn the ignition on we might have a little bit of a spurt hopefully. Mm, we did get a bit of fuel out but while I'm cranking now what I want to feel is a little bit of pressure there. I must admit, I can't hear the, the pump itself working. Let's just check the, the power's getting there. Because then we might know if it's actually the pump or wiring in the pump. The thing with these Daytonas, they make so much noise when they're not actually doing anything, you never know if stuff's working or not. OK. 
Okay, so nothing there. Cycle, 12 volts. Relay kicks in and that turns off. Cycle, we're getting voltage. Okay, so actually everything's getting to the pump. We just need to figure out whether the pump is doing anything itself. So that'll be it for now. I think um, I need to do a bit more testing on the pump itself. I think the wiring is all okay. The power supply to it's all okay. I just need to make sure that pump is working or whether I've just got some sort of blockage in the system, which could be the simple fix that we're all hoping for. Um, so stay safe, guys. Look after yourselves and I'll catch you on the flip side.